The Sunday TV Mass is brought to you by the Catholic Diocese of Sioux Falls with support from the Catholic Diocese of Rapid City, the Catholic Family Sharing Appeal, the generosity of viewers like you, and from a grant from the Catholic Community Foundation for Eastern South Dakota, which raises, manages, and distributes God's gifts to donor-directed ministries. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, today we gather to celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. We reflect upon the incredible mercy of God to forgive us of our sins. So as we enter into this Mass, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all who grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Stone that the builders rejected. 
a reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand, and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. 
Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the great obstacles in the spiritual life is if we do not actively seek forgiveness. Seek the forgiveness of God, seek the forgiveness of others, and forgive ourselves. Today we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. And we ha should have great, great, great confidence. In fact, great, great, great moral certitude in God's forgiveness, God's mercy. If we look closely at the reading, we have a very clear explanation why. Jesus is making it so very clear. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven, and whose sins you retain are retained. Jesus entrusted to the apostles through the holy priesthood the capacity to hear confessions and to forgive sins. In other words, they stand in the person of Christ, and it's God forgiving us of our sins through the power of the Holy Spirit. Notice it doesn't say your sins may be forgiven, or I'll take it into consideration. It says your sins are forgiven. Having worked as a priest, now as a bishop in the confessional, sometimes it's really hard to believe that God could love us enough, especially if there's something that's weighed us down and we may still continue to carry on our mind and our heart even if we've been to confession. What we want to do is step into that, if we've already been to confession and we've received absolution, the sin is forgiven. If we haven't, run to the confessional. Get to it as soon as you can to receive that reality, the incredible gift of God's mercy. And then surrender it to God. You see, the evil one wants to convince us that God cannot forgive us or that God does not love us enough, that the sin is too great for God to forgive. Those are lies. It's the voice of the evil one. Your sins are forgiven means your sins are forgiven. To experience the fullness of mercy as it relates to others and forgiveness is if somebody has offended us or we have offended someone else, to actively seek forgiveness. Ask for it. If we have offended somebody else, seek them out. If it's possible and prudent, ask for forgiveness. You can put it in a little letter, a little note some message, I'm sorry, I ask for your forgiveness. If someone has forgiven us, the great gift we can give them and God is to choose to forgive them. 
Even though our mind and our emotions might be saying the exact opposite, I choose to forgive you so that the mercy of God can enter into that part of our hearts where we extend forgiveness as God does. His unconditional love, that's what we're invited into. But I've also found in the confessional that one of the great challenges for some people can be forgiving themselves. Almost as if, I just can't let it go. If God can forgive us, then why can't we forgive ourselves? Certainly we're disappointed. Certainly we have great regrets. Certainly we ask for God's forgiveness and others if needed. Then we should forgive, allow that forgiveness to forgive ourselves, to realize, yes, I'm broken, I'm a sinner, but I'm saved by the grace of God. You see, we're not left it being stuck in guilt. The guilt has been forgiven, but so often shame wants to attach itself to us. Shame is like embarrassment. I can't believe I did it. I don't feel good about myself because I did it. We should always have a sense of sorrow, but filled with hope. Hope in the mercy of God, and once we've received that gift, to choose to believe it. So we don't go around in sadness, or the evil one works on us, or our own self-doubting makes us question our worthiness, our goodness, because God's the one that makes us worthy. He's the one that gives us the forgiveness of sins. He's the one that restores us to right relationship. It's all gift. Gift to be received. Gift to be shared. The gift to be actively sought out. My brothers and sisters, in this Divine Mercy Sunday, as we remember the beautiful gift of St. Faustina in her beautiful revel private revelations from the Lord, of his incredible mercy. If you've never had a chance to read or study anything about her, I encourage you to do so. It gives all of us that opportunity to learn more clearly, especially if we struggle with forgiveness. Forgiveness of God, forgiveness of others, or forgiveness of ourselves. The mercy of God is real and unconditional. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven. And that's the gift of going to confession, to have that absolute certitude and that absolution that's granted on behalf of Jesus in his person through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's enjoy the gift of being so loved and being set free if that's what we need. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we have acknowledged our faith, even our profession in the power of the sacrament. We acknowledge the beautiful gift of God's forgiveness. We acknowledge our great need for him. And so we place before the Lord these prayers petition. We pray for Francis, our Pope, Donald, our Bishop, and all priests and religious that they may always act in accordance with God's will for them. We pray to the Lord. For Holy Mother Church, that God may strengthen her leaders to be an instrument for the sanctification of souls, a light shining amidst the darkness of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, that God may grant them an increase of the virtue of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who do not yet have the virtue of faith, May God grant them the grace to know and love him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For favorable weather this spring, that farmers may be able to reap copious fruits of the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all men and women discerning their vocation, that God may pour into their hearts the grace to respond to his call. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the souls of the faithful departed, that God may grant them the gift of entering into his heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in great love, you have sent us your son Jesus to forgive us of our sins, to restore us to right relationship with you. In gratitude and thanksgiving and in confidence, we ask that you hear and grant these prayers and all of our needs according to your holy will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all the saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock that you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners... Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in the fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you would like to receive the leaflet missile or would like to learn more about the Catholic faith, please write to our address, The Sunday TV Mass, 523 North Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57104. The Sunday TV Mass is made possible by the Catholic Family Sharing Appeal and the generous support of our viewers.